In the 80s, Houston Rockets were one of those teams you loved to watch. Well, let's be clear, at the end of the 80s. But even then, you mostly remember the Rockets of the 80s because of Hakeem Olajuwon. He was the star, he was the man, he was the legend, and deservedly so. But there is one man we tend to forget about. One man that was a part of the famous Twin Tower duo. Just, in my opinion, didn't get the recognition that he deserved. Hello everyone, I'm Purple Prince and this time I want to talk about Ralph Sampson, the forgotten Twin Tower. Ralph Sampson was a star before he entered the NBA. In fact, Sampson was one of the most covered and highly regarded athletes of his generation. Sampson was blessed with great height. At high school he was already 7'1", and eventually Sampson grew 3 more inches to make him a 7'4", 230-pound nightmare for opposing centers. Samson played center for the University of Virginia four years and actually was considering to enter the 1982 NBA draft, but he didn't want to be drafted by the San Diego Clippers, so he stayed one extra year in school. Samson finished his college career with three Naismith Awards as the National Player of the Year and his number 50 was retired. I'd say he was pretty good in college. In the 1983 NBA Draft, Ralph Sampson was drafted number one by the Houston Rockets, and although Houston did win only 29 games in Sampson's rookie year, it was still a noticeable improvement over the 14 wins they got just a year ago. Sampson did his thing. As a rookie, Ralph Sampson averaged 21 points, 11.1 rebounds, and 2.4 blocks. Houston got even more media attention when second year in a row they got the first pick and chose to draft another center, Hakeem Olajuwon, and many were surprised because two unbelievably talented seven-footers on one team? That wouldn't work, right? And boy was everyone wrong. From there on, the Houston Rockets drastically improved. In Samson's second season, and first with Hakeem Olajuwon, the Rockets won 48 games and got to the playoffs where they were eliminated by Utah Jazz in five games. Samson and Olajuwon were beasts with Olajuwon averaging 20.6 points and 11.9 rebounds and Samson adding a cool 22.1 points and 10.4 rebounds. Seemed like the future was so bright, yet it turned out so bleak because of Samson's injuries. The 1985-86 season was great. Twin Towers were on full force. Samson averaged 18.9 points, 11.1 rebounds, while Olajuwon averaged 23.5 points and 11.5 rebounds. Houston won 51 games and made the playoffs. In the first round, Houston did an easy work of Sacramento Kings, 3-0. In the second round, Houston managed to beat the Denver Nuggets, 4-2, and now they were in the conference finals, facing the Showtime Lakers, their biggest fear turned out that they didn't have to fear anything, a quick five-game series with Houston going on to NBA Finals, where the biggest challenge awaited them. The Boston Celtics, a team that won 40 out of 41 games on their home court that year. Samson had some great moments in the series. Unfortunately, this series also kind of marked the downfall of Ralph Samson's career. The first two Rockets home games went to the Celtics, and everyone thought it's the end. The champion can be named. Ralph Sampson had different plans. Houston Rockets managed to win Game 3 thanks to some great play from Ralph Sampson, who had 22 rebounds in Game 3. In Game 4, Sampson scored 25 points, but that wasn't enough and Boston went up 3-1 in the series. Game 5 turned out to be a nightmare. Rockets were playing good and ended up winning the game. But during the game, a Celtics fan threw a mysterious inflatable doll over the edge of the railing. It was supposed to just taunt Ralph Sampson, but additionally, whenever Sampson grabbed a board, he was booed. Whenever he missed or made a shot, he was booed. The situation escalated and Ralph Sampson ran over to Jerry Sichting, who was taunting him, and elbowed him. The bench brawl was started, with Boston fans cheering yet booing at the same time. Rockets won that game, but Samson really lost it. To this day, Samson has said in various interviews that that day was traumatizing. Samson shot only 33% in Game 6, and the Rockets lost the Finals. This would be the last healthy season of Ralph Samson. In the 1986-87 season, he would hurt his back, and it was pretty serious. 
Samson ended up playing in just 43 games, starting 32 of them. Samson had the worst year of his career, averaging 15.6 points and 8.7 rebounds. Injured again in 1987-88 season, Rockets knew they had to trade Samson, and that's what they did. Ralph Sampson was traded to the Golden State Warriors 19 games into the season. The hell just got worse. Sampson played just 29 games for the Warriors and 48 games total that season, but still averaged 15.6 points and 9.6 rebounds for the season. Next season, by Ralph Sampson's standards, he was pretty healthy, but appearing in 61 games isn't enough. He started to play more of a bench role for the Warriors, playing just 17.8 minutes per game. Sampson had his worst year averaging 6.4 points and 5 rebounds. After the season, Sampson once again got traded, this time to the Sacramento Kings where he was a deep bench player. His health was getting worse and he ended up playing just 51 games for the Kings, with stats of 13.9 minutes per game, 3 points and 4.4 rebounds per game. Sampson did try to extend his career and played 10 games for the Washington Bullets in 1991-92 season, but it was so clear Sampson was done. Unfortunately, the lack of health really got to him, and these 10 games were the last he played in the NBA. Sampson had some games overseas, as he played 8 games for the Unica Haranda in the Spanish Basketball League. Two years later, Sampson played some games for the Continental Basketball Association but soon enough, he understood it's the end, and retired for good. Ralph Sampson's NBA career ended very prematurely, at just 32 years old, and you could say that it ended already in 1987 when the Rockets traded him. The basketball world did acknowledge Sampson's great influence and talent, and in 2012, Ralph Sampson was inducted into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. Ralph Sampson played in just 456 games, and for his career, he averaged 29.8 minutes, 15.4 points, 8.8 .8 rebounds and 1.6 blocks. But it was his 305 games for the Rockets where he established himself as one of the greats, one part of the first Twin Towers, a great part, yet unfairly forgotten because of his own injuries and the superiority of the other Twin Tower, Hakeem Olajuwon. Thank you very much for watching guys. Do you think the incident in Boston really impacted Ralph Sampson's career so much? Or was it just the injuries? Do you think Ralph Sampson is a great player and deserves to be in the Hall of Fame? Whatever your thought is, leave a comment below, like this video and subscribe for future NBA content. This was Purple Prince and I'm out. Catch me in the F-Town flexing Boy, I got the juice in the hot sauce Flying in the jet with the Baby, come fuck with the top dog Go to my cross Drink my cup Living life up Shout out my brush Living from the A and B and B and If you want static with it On a strip like magic